Hello everybody and welcome, bienvenue. We are about to begin the final three matches of this week's schedule for the EU Division Key. There's only three remaining matches, six teams. Three of these teams will be moving on to playoffs. Three of these teams will be eliminated forever and ever. And it is between Big Omen Academy and LDLC. And it's going to be an extremely brawly map here on Dust2. I think we can just go straight into the end game because the pistol round is already underway. And it is going to be big on the T side, Keith, setting the pace for us here. But I, I do have some concerns, Keith. My main concerns is that big, they don't really have this map played on HLTV. And the last one they have played on HLTV was early January. And they got 16 forward by Espada. And we've obviously have seen LDLC play this map recently. They've been insane on it. And this is going to be a very interesting game, to say the least. Yeah, LDLC, last time we watched Body and Haji popped off, so keep that in mind as we move into this match. Big have a tall order in front of them. <laughs> a monster to get through. An elimination match, Roy, right? Memory serves, so everything matters. Zonwent is going to be throwing the smoke. Hades will get the other one. A flash over the top, and here we go. The executor's on. A drop down CT. Fro's gonna have to do something from Goose to find this little cat player. He does. He's lost his ramp player. He's gonna start to get overwhelmed. Does he find any frags? From Bob. Oh. Creep on out. And Turnbow's able to get one towards long. All the T's get the kills required. And it's just Hadji alone, Roy. Just like that. Okay. I was a little concerned there for uh, for Big Omen. Not gonna lie. I saw Afro Trap setting the trap up towards Goose. But he only got one from that position. Now uh, Hadji. Oh! Oh my god. Imagine he got all three right there, but now he's hunting for Hades. Only player there on site. He has no backup. The backup is a little bit okay. far away. Haji makes it now into a 1v1. Can he figure out where Krimbo is? Oh, but he's already advanced on him, and he catches him by surprise. And Haji, he almost made that work, Keith. Imagine. <laughs> Would have been one insane piss. It ends the way it started, though, in big control. LDLC able to get scouts out. Haji gets armor behind his. That's pretty neat. And already an early tag on a process. Sixer is in a bit of a one and done with a scout in theory. Pushing in towards lower. Body. All the while is going to try to challenge long. Hades will have this on lock. So it seems like Big are going to re, uh, reconsider their options. Those two players that wanted to push their tunners early. Without having anyone spotting mid. Elect to just fall back towards long and... Seems like they're just going to do what they did on their pistol. Just trying to take the A site. This time, obviously, not a CT drop, but just long control with the weapons. And I don't mind this, Roy. Pretty safe, pretty simple. Yeah, the only problem is now they got to deal with the scout somehow. If he gets a couple tags off, that's going to be problematic. Shots are now popping off. Pros is out in the open, going for a lineup. That's not quite the, the safe lineup to throw. But now it's just smoke on site. Body's playing around it with a deagle. This could get very weird. Starting to get a little weird. Panic. Maintains. He'll get to. It leaves Afro and Sixer now. May just set up for some exit kills. It got weird for a moment there, but uh, it, it was held up nicely by Big. Nice sh eagle shot from Afro. I wonder if this is going to give them the confidence to go for this. Player back sight. Has to win the fight against Afro. He will. Panic's going to tap them both down. Very relaxed in that situation. Big get two. They convert it. LDLC. Get a little bit of damage, Roy. But uh, nothing carried over here, so. Yeah, now their money seems completely like... demolished. So yeah. It's, it's, just, yeah. it's just pistols here for the LDLC side. PG-50 for Afro. A couple flashbangs. So they have some plans in mind, and it appears to be a mid-stack. So they're either going for the fast rotate to B, or they're just going to hold down for the potential B split that could be incoming, or any sort of short A play. They'll have numbers there. They'll be ready to contest it if they need to. But I think the goal here for LDLC, the Frenchman, is just get a few kills, right? Keep the money low for big. You've done a good job in the last round. Keep it off right here. Now they go into the stack. Take Omen. They got to decide, are we going to commit to this? Or are we going to keep fighting from behind the doors? And it seems like they're going to just let safe at it. They're going to give up that gun. It's only a MAC-10. Not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. But that kill is a big kill in the grand scheme of things. That's the bomb. And that's an AK. Uh-oh. Panic has to come back and drop a molly. Krimbo gets into CT. He'll find two, but kept even by Haji. 
Panic and Hades just gonna take it up, catwalk, smoke themselves off from behind, take long control of these AKs. Hades will even plant for long. And this makes this retake oh so difficult for the LDLC, boys. A Max 10, a Molly, a Flash, no kit, no smoke, no long range weapons, which sets Panic up beautifully. The only real chance is if they find the site player clean and within a well, well, well respected amount of time. They're gonna start to move now. Panic will have a flash raid. He's speaking another one while he's fighting. Full blind of these CTs. Time's ticking away, Roy. Sixer, although he finds one, Panic's just gonna back up. Unless he's stuck that defuse in the first half, that's just gonna be that. Sadly, oh, can't even AK. grab the oh, AK. Want, he, oh. I saw, I saw the look in his eyes. I saw his movement. He wanted that AK so bad. No, no one knows where that AK has gone to. Oh wait, not no time. But expensive, very expensive for Big Omen. Now there's so much rest on this line for them. The problem is now they're going into LDLC's full buy, right? This is what they've been saving for the entire time anyway. The op, the M4 is the full utility. A few kits on the board. Actually, only a single one for body, but the full utility to help things out. And with how, how much easier it is to retake the B site now, it's not as big of a stress to, to make make sure you have multiple kits. But a couple good saves early on. The flashback not very effective. And Haji's body are just destroying them towards long gate. And Big Omen, they lose two players. And they have gained nothing back to that game. Onwin at least finds Lambert in mid. That's the guy that was going to help the B player. And you can see immediately Afro pushes into B tunnels. That's the response. But LDLC have pushed the extremities. <laughs> Haji is pushed through long. He's coming towards mid. Bodies going into tunnels. They have found the Blurker and Onwin. Yes, they get the B site. But they're going to be pressured. Two from doors and windows. Two from tunnels. Looks like they're going to group three players through tunnels. This gives Panic some good fights. If he doesn't get traded out. Pops up. Taps away. Does he get two? No. Well, hang on to his molly. He will go down. Crimbo knows where they're both coming from. In towards the window position. As the bomb ticks away, he looks for a fair fight, and Afro is just going to rip that from his hands. LDLC, three kills from Haji, and they'll get one on the board. And he's got the kit, so no problems there. They got the op. Now everything is recovered. Big Omen, unfortunately, though, they're not going to have a lot of money here to work with. If they do want to force here, it's going to have to be Deagles, uh, maybe an op for Panics. Rimbo can pump out an AK or a Galil full Yuto if he really wants to. But I think, I think this... Oh, I spoke too soon. I was going to say, I think okay. the safer route is just to save up, but nah, they're going for it. They're going for the Hail Mary, the all-in right here. An AK to work with, an AWP to work with, and everyone else is on pistols, a MAC-10 for Hades. But they do have a lot of util, though, which suggests that they can at least do their set pieces, right? They can do their short A executes if they want. They can do their B execs if they want. Any Mitsubi is also a possibility. But the real thing is... Try to avoid and minimize damage as early as possible, right? Don't die to the op. Don't die to the M4s. Try to get into a position where you can get your set piece going. Maybe the flashbangs will help you close the distance with those pistols. Now, it is a body in the middle. Trying to peer. Trying to get information. Oh, wait. He's falling off. They're advancing, Keith. Yeah, they're going to creep out on this. As Panic get good timing, he does. He spots body just on those jump up boxes. And now Big Omen can kind of hit that reset button, right? They could they could take a moment here. Consider their options. See what map control they have. They've just gotten the op forced off of the cat peak. And Panic's gonna push forward. He's looking for the sight player, and he's got them both. Don't tell me he gets this long player to boot. On top of it all, here comes Haji on a flash panic. Staying alive, dodging it for now. Grimbo with the AK. Nothing. Bombs down in such an awkward spot. Afro can just stay alive and hold this. What a weird situation. Process and CT gets cleared. Smoke will come out. Afro will dance. And they maintain long control to LDLC. They're doubling up in towards CT. Here comes a flash jump down. This is crazy as Hades oh cleans them up. Lord, they trade positions. Happening? Lambert gets one in long from Haji. This is... That is the weirdest played out round I've seen in a while. <laughs> that kind of devolved very quickly, didn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my lord. All right. I feel like Panics was trying to do his best God impression right there. Like, he was literally trying to put that entire round on his back.
And he almost did it. That one last missed shot, I think, was a turning point in that scenario. A sixer plucks Edward out of the server. And unfortunately, they were all in last round. And they weren't able to get the bomb planted. So it is going to be just pistols here. Glocks mostly. P250 for Haiti. And a single flash that just got used. Yeah. If I remember correctly, Roy, just a little interesting side tidbit. Sixers Dragon Lore off. Was that not Kenny S's that he won a major event with? If I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, I. I'm trying. Like I remember the. Yes. I, I I remember the story, but I can't remember the context. I don't know if it was like what event he won with that op, but then when Sixer left. Kenny has Can gave him the ops. So it's just a little cool. Yeah, it's just a cool little little storyline. It's kind of like the same thing as professional sports players giving their jersey um, after a game to like, you know, cool, cool little tidbit. It's a cool little tidbit. Now it's back on the AKs for big. No ops, Keith. Penix has done such a good job with the op. Oh, this is an, a different boost. Oh, I think I've seen the booth there before. Cheeky. Well, Lambert might be in trouble here, Roy. I like his positioning. He somehow flicks over to panic, but yeah, there's the trade from Big. Do they charge into the B site, though? Seemingly like they want to, but they're just going to wait. They're going to listen to these rotates. They're going to hear the utility getting tossed into B. They have a good understanding. That LDLC have rotated numbers over here. And with plenty of time for big to reset with, th there is no reason to force it. I, I like this reserved big. You know, they're not they're not being too over aggressive. And for a bunch of young players, they're they're playing with with <laughs> year like years of wisdom. They're playing very smart. A lot of young teams will see just rush in there, Roy. So they're playing they're playing a good game. Yeah, you can actually always count on these guys to, to play like this. I feel like they're very disciplined and they're not willing to get too antsy in these kind of scenarios. They know when they have the advantage. Now the smoke hopefully would cover the cross, but they threw the, only the deep one. The other smoke's a little bit late. There's still kind of a crack in it as well. Now Prosus finds an important kill on Tabati that eliminates any of the high ground pressure, which leaves the two remaining LDLC players coming from the low ground, coming from CT spawn, a one from one trade. Haji now looking for his best clutch impression. He's gotten one, but he still has two more to go, Keith. Oh, how does he do it? He's going to try to isolate a fight there in a crossfire. Will not be given the chance. Shut down by Grimbo. Four to three. Go Big Omen Academy. LDLC's money is in a weird spot. And I have a feeling because Six are going to afford the op. Lambert can buy. Afro can buy. They may just save because he can get the op next. Just, yeah, just get some scouts. Get some pistols. I was thinking they might go for it, but let's be honest. You want Haji and Body on, on full buys as often as you can get it. So, I like this. Very conservative from ldlc but big have impressed they've converted their first rifle roy after ldlc get three in a row and let's hope big can keep the damage to a minimum which has kind of hampered them early on in this match yeah that has been a big problem for them no pun intended they are up against double scouts right it's there's always a kind of a, a big question mark an x factor almost when there's scouts available on this map i feel just because of how many headshot angles and kind of like pivot angles there are on this map now they're going to attempt this rush. Look, they're overlooked Haji completely. He's just tapping away with a P250, taking his time, ensuring the kills, and he's done some damage. At least that's guaranteed. Now Anwin is isolated on short eight. He's going to hear a bunch of players behind him. He will try to the escape. He'll try to set himself up for a better position here in this post plant as the bomb does get planted towards the default position. Now we're on. Now he takes on. Good flash over. Panic is tagged up. He's going to stick around. It's double scouts coming in from long. The big boys could be in some trouble here. They're going to both fall. The scout of Afro is going to claim two. It leaves Krimbo alone. He's on site. Lambert's creeping through the cat smoke and just one taps him. LDLC with a scouts and pistols, right? Raw big blind. Wow, that is... That is so unfortunate for Big, but so well played by Haji. I don't know if you saw his perspective at all, but he was just no care in the world. Just like slowly aiming, make, guaranteeing the kill shots. Beautifully, beautifully played by Haji right there from behind that car position. No Zero panic to his, his play at all. 
You gotta love that. Now Big Omen are in a much tougher spot, right? Double Mac 10s on the full force here. They're all their entire economy is in the cards. Now they're looking for the long gate flash. This is gonna be really 50-50 here. Unless Sixer gets one. Oh no, he's not able to react fast enough. Molly into the pit. Panic just gonna tuck in and lead a little bit of nade damage. Another Molly. They know he's in there. They're really trying to flush him out. A nade on top of it. The Molly, the pit is so big, so the Mollies won't exactly spread to him, but he's gonna peek on a flash. And at this point, if he gets a kill, I think that's better than what he's gotten so far. So tag down to 14, sends Haji back, LDLC, keep a player at car. And Big want to just back it up. They're going to throw a smoke and act like that player's left hit. And I'm intrigued to see if LDLC push long and try to clear that now, right? I have a feeling that might be the move. Yeah. A third. A model. third. I was going to say, that's... <laughs> okay, they got... <laughs> finally get some. Finally. That's so much money. That's like, oh, like over two grand, right? In money alone in Molly's. More. They got, they have to, they have to so throw the crazy. flashbangs, they have to throw the HEs in there as well. The mollies, yeah, it's a ton of money just got up to clear them out. But hey, it's worth it. Uh, I'll spend that much money to get a kill out of it. And now the hit's coming in towards the B site. Lurk Smoke is there, Lambert's inside the door position. And we get one, but a wild spray wow. from Lambert. The complete opposite of the composure from Haji. And that leaves him now with a B site, and LDLC is left save towards elongate and big omen they have done it with an unconventional purchase in an unconventional round they managed to make it work lambert definitely had a chance to get two there roy and if we just take a look at this quick quick roy i just want you to look at haji this is just 15 and 6 <laughs> he has score. 15 kills dude he and we're only going in around 10. he is having a game i feel like there hasn't been a round yet where he doesn't sneak in with a pistol on their saves and get one. Like, tagging plate with the scout when he breaks it out just for fun. He is deadly on this LDLC roster. And if him and Body start getting going, who knows how this half will end. But we can definitely see how it's starting. And bigger. I don't think LDLC were expecting this, this amount of, like, caution from the Big Omen boys. All right, what you got for us here, LDLC? It's gonna be a push down towards top mid from Body as he looks to start to get aggressive here. He's not able to get much out of it. An exchange of damage, it's not favorable for him either. And they've already lost a lot their long A anchor, Keith. Now this round is a bit weird. Lambert, he does have op posted lower B here. Hades walks in. That's the equalizer right there and there. Seems like he's looking to... He might be aware of this position. Intuition right now kicking in for him. That's that's really impressive. As soon as he gives it up, Hades walks in. Classic. Classic. Body on 14 HP Roy. He's got to be a little careful. Doesn't want to give too much up but at the same time the way haji went down was kind of awkward panic was able to get out long roy jump in pit and find haji jumping onto the site from ramp so but he knows long control is still in big's control there's the molly towards car not wanting to allow anyone to make another sneaky play and here comes panic with the flash can the site player in six or get anything going his way an up on site. There's the one. Is he dancing for two? Able to get two in such an awkward spot. That's probably the best you can ask for from Sixer in this situation. Oh, As body, body jumping AK stops the plant. Hello? Hades gets him and that's it. No time. The jumping kill from body secures it. That is filthy. Wow. <laughs> wow, that... <laughs> There's so many factors playing into that, too. Like, if that player planting was not so low health, he would have survived that bomb plant. And just the RNG from the AK gets him there. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, luckily for both these teams, they still got money somehow. 
Double up maintained for LDLC. Big Omen. They've not had much success with the slow playing towards Long Gate. They're going to try their luck here with the B Explode. Last time they did this in the late round, it worked out well. This time they're trying to do it as early as possible. Of course, the smoke black bang raining in from the sky. is a massive telltale sign to what they're up to. Now it's just a brawl here on this B site. Kills left and right thus far. Body can be locked it down in conjunction with the window player. Seemingly so. It's panic alone. Time on his side. Bombs down in tunnels. No safe haven to cross with these new doors. Looking for some sort of fight against body and towards window. Will he be gifted one? He's being very patient. Here he comes. He'll creep up. But Haji's got the cover. Headshot in with the M4. LDLC hold on. They keep the double ops rolling. Big Omen Academy without a plant. And with no loss bonus. It's completely gone. They're going to have to take a save, Roy. It's been a while for them. I wonder if they know what it's like. Hmm? It's never a good feeling to save this thing to the half. Not only that, but you're potentially about to give up a comfortable lead here for LDLC. A two-round lead. A potential for them to finish 10-5 as well, which... 10-5, by the way, on Dust2 is incredible. Look at Body's positioning right now. They have so much... Wait, do they know that he's here? They're flashing... For him. But... <laughs> destroyed. I think Enwin's flash got... Wow. Cleaned up swiftly from LDLC. What is the move from Big here? An op on Panic. AK's bought up. Will they pick up the pace? Are they going to keep playing the slow pick style where they get a long pick and execute? And What is going to be the move? They've been leaning heavily towards long and B. Not a lot of cap pressure, which is interesting to be on a T side. But at the same time, I can't blame them because LDLC typically like throwing bodies towards cat. They enjoy fighting mid. So... They're working the extremities, they're working the outer lanes, and uh, understandably so, as Lambert with a second op is towards Cat at this moment. And at the same time, Sixer and Co. going to push up in towards upper tunnels. There's no way they expect Afro here. Hades is going to try to at least clear it, then look there, but it's a little too late. Two kills for DLC without a single point of damage, and Lambert's posted on long. The smokes will bloom, Cross gets spotted, Haji gets some good timing, and the other two have to cross now. Big gap. Nowhere to go. Trying to run Boost Panic across. He'll go. Gets the first shot. That was impressive. But now Krimbo's in trouble. 1v4. Flash behind him. Given a fair fight. But will he give it, be given another? He's going to have to flash. Work for himself. And live for himself here, Roy. This is going to be so hard. Yeah, I think the biggest threat is Lambert on top of that site with the AWP. And he just dealt with that biggest threat now. The other threat is the deep AWP. He knows exactly where wow. Afro is. But he's not able to secure... Second duel is Sixer, long range from downtown with the op. Eight to five now. Economy once again for Big Omen. Without these bomb plants, keep it's going to be a tough buy. So they're probably going to go for the pistol and armor here. Still affords them a chance, but definitely in favor for LDLC to close up a ninth round here on the CP side. It's already an impressive beat. Oh, a little tag by Lambert. Okay. That's the bomb. Well, that's the bomb, and then that's the kills for her Afro George B site. Everything gets cleaned up. LDLC have done a nice job, Roy, of on these ecos from Big. Not taking any damage, really. That's twice in a row where you've seen Big boys with pistols not being able to get any kills, where early on, it was kind of the opposite story. Uh, where LDLC were taking plenty of economic damage. So, LDLC have tightened up. They've definitely started playing more into their style. While Big haven't been able to win these duels. The double ops from LDLC perhaps not have made too much of a factor. It's been the Haji show right now. But Sixer chased off a cat and he gets the one for two. That's what you love to see. The first time in a long time Big sends someone towards cat and Sixer says no. Wow. That is so unfortunate for Big. A lateral. How are they even going to recover from this? They're starting to group towards short, it seems. I'm always curious to know, like, what the conversations on teams are like. I feel like there needs to be a protocol for the, the mobs, right? Like, 
surely as a team, people have started discussing, okay, like when, when teams have double ops, like what is, what is our most optimal strategy to minimize risks and maximize our success here? And it, it, no, it feels like not many teams have really figured that out. Not many teams have had a good discussion about it, but now Hydra's coming in on the flank. Of course, Big Oven has forfeited the entire map, so it's really just a formality at this point. I really don't see Big Oven winning this one, and there it is. LDLC 10 to 5. An impressive defense half, but even more impressive from Haji, who sits at 22 and 8. He did not slow down from when you brought up his score, Keith. That's so crazy. Yeah. He, he, he's just playing some really good Counter-Strike. He's winning those fights. We talk about Tustu a lot and how your individual level and current like form and how he's been playing lately really translates nice to Dust2, right? You can't... It's hard to get, quote-unquote, outbrained in a map like Dust2. There's a lot of 50-50s. You take response towards long, you know? It's one of the more aim-heavy maps, I'd say, in the pool. So, Haji seemingly has just been on form lately. Whenever they play this map, he himself and Body are up there. Thoroughly, thoroughly impressed quite often by these two. As LDLC have an interesting pistol for us, Roy. They get long control early, make the presence known with utility, and leave two to fake this. I haven't seen a long fake in quite some time, if I'm being completely honest. And I think Body is showing a lineup right now at the same time. I don't know what's happening, but I'm all for it. Here we go. Double smoke to provide cover. Flashbangs to deny information. Big Coleman is not quite sure what's happening, but he does manage a quick kill. It is pulling the rotate, so they've taken the bait just enough, just long enough, so that Panix has repositioned himself into a, a little bit unfavorable position. And now the remaining players for LDFC have shown their hand. Afro gets one. Haji with the second. The one-two punch to open up the B site. Process, though, along with the team, are not delaying the entry. Afro's good for one, and he guys this is the second one on the follow-up as well. But Hades trying to do the same. A one versus one now. Oh, Afro top taps. He jumps up. Is he going to do it again? Yup. Running it back. And Hades holds. He's got three. He says, Afro, whatever you can do, I can max you. And on top of that, I'll clutch. A big, wow, big pistol round. I've already committed. I pff, brain yeah. fart. But it was. It really was. Hades stepped up. He showed us what he's got, and he is really one of the players that I'm thoroughly impressed with whenever I watch this Big Omen Academy. It's always sick to see like that Big always has those players that can just X-factor the round, right? Change up the pace, change up the style, turn unfavorable scenarios favorably. That's always important to have these kind of players, and it seems like everyone on the Big side can have these moments. But a one-for-one -one trade right now into this round is getting a little weird here. The bunch of that he's starting to get dumped here by Big. That was their final Molotov, however, so they don't have their stopping power is coming to an end. Primbo just wasted another smoke towards upper B. Now they only have one smoke remaining. That one is towards long A. That's it. That's all their stopping power. LDLC. If they want to make this rush for sight, they can. They just gotta deal with process here. You just got tagged too. Oh, Process. Very low on HP. Sixer will be holding. Haji and Kill Lock. Whoa! Oh, why? Oh, dude, that was so insane from Sixer. The flick with the Glock to find the player jumping. Excuse me? Please tell me that was on stream, Roy. Right no, we, we, we saw it, but not from his perspective. Like, we saw the flick, but not from his perspective. Dude. <laughs> he was holding the ramp player. It just breaks his ramp. He goes for the burst too, huh? I, I don't know. I think that was... I think he just turned Burst off before that. But, like... Ew. And That's they get a plant. Like, what? Yeah, that was a really big round. Three casualties. Bomb plant. Now you have ops. You got AKs. You got full utility. Hmm. LDLC sitting in a pretty good spot. Big Omen on the verge of a double reset right here. I wonder what their, what their approach is here, because you lose this, you're, you're potentially letting the LDSC get up to 13. Not only that, but they're going to have a, a buttload of money to work with. They've pushed up yeah. they've pushed up short A, they spotted nothing. Key. They're, they're narrowed it down to either B tunnels, potential mid to B, or long A. The A players said, okay, we're going to focus long A, you two handle the mid to B. 
They're in great position. They're going for the re-aggression, though. They're going to be caught right into the open. This is exactly where LD LDLC wants to catch them in no man's land. Now there's a combat happening towards mid. Body finds an important kill. Panic's now isolated on an island here on towards the A site, and he's getting pressured from both sides simultaneously. He's trying to do his best, trying to use all his utility for stopping power to buy his teammates some time to rotate. Body catches Panic in the open, but Panic still wins the fight. And it's down to the two versus two now. Bomb is making its way to the bomb site. Afro. Still thinks someone's up here. Not quite sure what happened. I want to clear it. He's convinced. He's convinced someone's up here. But Panix was the player there and he fell off. He's going for the long flank too. Bomb has been planted. Flank for the long game. Lambert at car will be holding this. Panic got off. It's on when alone. They suspect him creeping in CT. They spot him now, and here comes Afro jumping up. Will peek with Lambert, and they get the job done. LDLC to 11, Roy. Big. They lose the opening fights, and it seems like LDLC was just splitting them all over the map. What, what a problem. Okay. You know, they might have problems, but Krimbo, he's got a solution. Starting it off, right? But this is the double eco, right? Big Omen, they're fully forced up right here. Double scouts, pistols, and armor. Not a lot of util, just a smoke flash. Panics and Hades. They are man up. And they have two scouts, and we've already seen what scouts can do in, in this, on this map. And in this game, even. Now the LC is... Pretty split up right now too, which suggests that they're not really looking to commit yet. Mm. On went. Jiggling middle here, spotting Lambert. I'm just gonna let him have LDLC. Just let him have this med control. Big with a man up are just gonna adjust numbers. They have Hades pushed up all the way along. These two players in A about to be tested. Flash towards Long on the ramp. They are going to clear out Prostis. Can Panic land a shot? Not one. And Body. Just entry on entry on entry. He does not stop. Haji will get tagged. He's not going to want to peek anymore. Body sure does, though. He wants all four. And he'll be pushing for the ace. That's round. That's 12. And that's just how Body rolls. Somebody once told me Long ain't gonna be my <laughs> I am the sharpest AK on LDLC I don't know In I'm France In <laughs> I think the weirdest thing for me in that round is that Hades is in a really strong position, right? You caught him towards Long, he had full control He's pushed up to the double doors I feel like the scouts could have played a less committed position just like this like, okay, you want to have the guy goose? That's fine. But why not have the guy in, in game helper, right? And to that towards that car position, just let the scout do some damage, and maybe avoid the initial wave of flashbangs. That way, you can actually have a chance to tag one, maybe catch another headshot. Like it, that's. I feel like with those committed positions on site made it really hard. And if you are gonna run the bait setup, then the player ramp needed to peak like much sooner, right? Otherwise, you're obviously just gonna hard clear goose on a anti eco. Now, Big Omen, up for short A, body spotted players pushing, so I think they're very much aware of the potential of the push here. Lambert, body, oh. <laughs> body was playing a very interesting game right there, Keith. A little, a little, a little, a little risky. Letting it, letting it run, letting it go. And no op, may I say here, Roy, for the Big Omen side. They are going to be opless. Ooh, and they want to take attack, but they don't know how to no. do it, Roy. Uh, and I think the conversation would have been maybe about this buy, right? Because now look, <laughs> Grimbo is still trying to figure out what he wants to finish. There's no kits. They couldn't afford any mollies. I don't know if they're considering a half buy into a full next with ops and full utility, but too little too late now, Roy. I feel like when you're the opposite team and, and this happens to them, 
gives you like this morale boost like oh they're disjointed we know they wanted to pause to discuss things but they didn't get a chance now it's like all right let's let's press it forward boys let's <laughs> get this dub and it seems like ldlc is beginning to pressure up short a the smoke is perfectly timed by process they still have hades towards long a so their a defenses right now are on point there, there are no weaknesses there are no gaps to it a lot of damage dealt by panic towards mid onto sixer that might help later on to the round another smoke here to block them off on short a now if there's no flush here if there's no ldlc falling back to create some more noise the big is that well they're short a they have to be but the bomb is towards upper b keys this is everything that ldlc is doing towards short a and mid it is just a fake yeah just to draw attention get the focus Drops into CT from Hanji. And they catch Panic in the open, hoping he'll get one, but none will be found. Hanwin is so blind towards B. Car position's not what it used to be. It's caught out as Process at least will get Sixer. The bomb will go down with 10 seconds. A save will follow. And that's how we will end this round from Big. 14 from LDLC. And it seems like the story will continue of the Haji body show on the top of the scoreboard for LDLC. I feel like maybe Tusk is the map where they just both come alive on the same time, Roy. They're allowed to open up and probably play a bit more loose. Yeah, this is definitely the loosest map, right? Like, there's so much room for individual decision making. Right, I'm lower tunnel as well. Am I flanking up TT? Am I faking mid to B? Am I going up cat helping my teammates? Am I... You know what I mean? There's just so much like individual decision making that can play a massive role. And it seems like Body and Haji just have to make anything work. Luckily for Big, they have three guns saved, plus their loss bonus. And they managed to steal Sixers off. So they have that going for them right now. Do you get the pause in the end, Roy? Will we see some aggression from the big boys? Are they going to take long control? Perhaps catwalk? Uh, the LC have had a... I don't know if you'd call it a free ride, Roy, but they've they've been pretty breezy. Middle hasn't been too much pressure. Long once in a blue moon, but I don't feel like they've ever been fully challenged or met with force by the big boys across the map. So maybe this is the round it changes, Roy. Let's see. French is pressure to towards long. A one for one trade. That's not bad. They've gotten control out of that. And Afro peeks off the. Catches Panics completely in the open in an angle that is exposed to several positions. It seems like Big Omen is playing a very risky game. And I think they're maybe running out of answers here. But as of right now, it appears that LDLC is in full control of these outcomes, full control of these rounds. Afro. Holding for the upper B push right now. He seems to be pretty aware of it. As soon as he looks away, oh, they turn corners on both directions. Trimble going for the flank, though. And... Okay, there it is. Wait, he's gonna... oh. Wait they, they've been spotted. Yeah, yeah, they, they know. Onwin has communicated it. Crimbo won't get here in time, but Onwin can find Lambert. It was the last man of the party. An AK picked up. Utility of plenty for big to go. For. Bomb's going to start going down now from Sixers. Hanji's looking for a fight. A lurk smoke in tunnels. So that's going to buy them some space. They're going to have to fight this door player. I wonder if LDLC know this. They're going to double flash. Is Hanji going to look for a fight? He is. Crimbo behind the door. Doesn't get cleared. It's Sixer alone. Big moment for the man. Stock back, silent up. Not the best place to be. And put down by process. LDLC get pinched. They get popped. Big will keep the game going. They'll keep LDLC off 15 for now. What are these rounds, dude? These rounds are so insane. Like, they're so unconventional and unorthodox. I'm surprised that either team has any sort of semblance of reaction to what, what is happening. And as chaotic as it is, they seem to still have their... Kind of their team play rocking for them, right? Like that that 3v3 right there from Bay was perfectly played. They cleared out Lambert on the flank. They grouped up towards upper B. The player that solo knows that he's probably going to get pushed as soon as the both those players are spotted. Plays behind the door. Like that's that's such such fundamental play. So sick there from Big. But LDLC also making awesome decisions too. 
shape it up to be exactly what we wanted. And there's still so much room for more here. Panics. Oh, Miss shot. Not even a leg. Gets immediately destroyed by Body, who's been an absolute beast on this map so far. Lambert stands away for long. He runs off, so that's Hades. Says, yep, I'm taking that free control. But he came back, Roy. The cat came back the very next day, and so did Lambert. He thought he was a goner, and Haji full blind finds Prosis. Now LDLC can regroup. They've gotten the long pick. They found the rotator out of CT. And they're saying goodbye, B site. Hello, A site. They know it's clear for the most part. A safe cross. A safe plant. As Afro spots Krimbo and will just take him down. I think he just spotted his shoulder or his elbow and just spams him through the door. Incredible control. Is on win on 19. Well, we see what he's up to. It's LDLC to get to 15, Roy. They've, they've been on a bit of a tear. Yeah, what what is all even the loss bonus here for big? Do they even have one left? It's it's ninety it's twenty four hundred dollars this round. Wow, that's yeah, that's it, not a lot to work with, is it? Not enough, sadly. If they take if they take out this gun right here, that's that's an M four plus another M four that could be dropped over. Oh, they go the other way. Okay, so he gets to keep it for now. That's perfect. This buy is going to be so weird here. I hope they take a tactical timeout to really discuss what their best route is. Please, for the love of Christ. <laughs> I, I hope they do as well. Nah, they're rocking it. Wow. Full winging it. I respect it, but at the same time, probably should have taken a talk. Seeing what you want to do, what walk you want to walk, what pace. They're going to send a couple up. Cat. And maybe a third. There it is. Just took some time. So 1A, 1B, 3 cat. Aggressive forward stance from the big boys. Will they catch good timing on a six or no? Can they chase him down? Definitely not. They allow him to escape. On went on an off angle and towards B. Eventually, perhaps, is gifted a kill. But you have to think now, big have to continue to press forward. Need to get a kill back, and that's what exactly what they do. A boost towards short will find the head of body. And leaves LDLC very spread. As on one's off angle. We'll find Afro. Deliver some damage. And send him packing out of the B site. So. Big big answer back. In a good way. Look at position. He gets hard here by Afro. The one for one trade is still pretty good. Considering the space that they have to work with. But LDLC. They might be backing on out. They still have time. They can reset the situation. Look at Lambert. He's gaining space for short A. Now the fallback. Mid to B might be dangerous, though, since Krimbo is there. But Big Omen, look how spread they are, Keith. They have one player B, one player mid. Krimbo might... Oh, is he going to go for the peak? Oh, he misses timing. Oh, but he's chasing. He's coming up real quick behind him. Krimbo is going to find Aji. Sixer has to go forward. Lambert will worry about behind. One player in A for them to get through. Can Panic just find Sixer? Will he be able to get a tag? He'll tag up Lambert, clean it up. Sixer sits and holds with the op, and Panic locks them down. Big. Get the op. They get out with two AKs. But unfortunately, Roy, not only do they have no room for failure, but they have to keep going against buys from LDLC. At least one more comfortably. Okay, that's not bad. This is workable. You have a, you have a couple of AKs. You have an op up here for panic. You got full utility. You got some kits. Now LDLC does not have the op to contest with, so you know you're up against rifles. The opers can get a little wild right here, but Panics is playing a very dangerous game. But it's paid off this time. He catches Body, the player that's been causing the most trouble here for LDLC. Now all four remaining Frenchmen, Keith, are up towards long. You know the ops wars mid, so they can just walk up here. No worries about the op site peak. Nades on the cross do so much. Six are oh, double God. entries though. Oh my goodness. Lambert may burn. Afro will try to cover. He gets caught trading weapons. He switches them out in his hand. Gets caught. Panic will take some damage. As we've seen this exact post play from LDLC before. Car in sight. Car will start to get spammed. That's gonna make Aji a little nervous. 
on win with the long flank panic coming up cat no kit only a flash a lot of pressure on these big omen academy players as panic will slowly creep can he find six on his side it'll be such a awesome kill for him to find and it's not gonna happen they both will fall ldlc will do it roy it honestly very surprised to find them in two to two pool they make roster changes they make pick up body and honestly they've been on the up and up since then i, I think bounty has brought a lot to this team not only mentally but fracking wise yeah, I think this LDLC roster is proving to be a top contender in Season 4 of Winners League for the European Division, for sure. And I think they're only going to get stronger from here, which is the scariest part, because they already look like a pretty good team. Mind you, we've really only seen a limited map pool from them so far. I think it's been Nuke and Dust 2 mostly that we've seen from them. So I've yet to see how they're going to be doing on their Nuke. How are they going to be doing on their Infernos or Train? Like, wh what exactly do they have in their pool, right? Are they, are they ready on Overpass? But... Before we get into that, I just want to say shout out to Big Omen Academy, a phenomenal team. You guys have been amazing to watch here in Season 4. Unfortunately, you are eliminated, but thank you, thank you, thank you for participating in this season and making it so special and entertaining for thousands of fans and thousands of people watching. So thank you guys. Commiserations. Congratulations to LDSC who have proven themselves to be a pretty strong contender, and I'm very, very excited to see them play here in the playoffs I just want to see what they're going to look like in BO3's key. That's, that's yes. where I'm at right now. Yeah, we get to figure out their map pool, right? Can we see Body and Haji do the exact same on different maps where they're going to be on a bit of a tighter leash, where they're going to have to be playing a bit more cohesive right. outside of their loose style, which I think that's going to be really exciting. Yeah. And by the way, if you're wondering what's happening here in Winner's League, so we have two matches remaining. They're not going to be tonight, though. They're going to be tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be between Crazy and Argentina versus AGF and Apex, Keith. Those games are... Wow. I, I can't even wrap my mind around how insane those games are going to be, especially Crazy versus Argentina. I feel like that's going to be an insane matchup. That's tomorrow at 10 a.m. I believe that is 1,600 CEST for you guys in Europe. But besides that, if you want to know for sure, check HLTV, check win.gg for those time zone conversions that are there for you to let you know what's happening and make sure to follow... Our socials, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, will let you know exactly what's happening, when it's happening. So follow along if you wish to continue and keep up with the content. There's, again, two group matches remaining, and then we begin best of threes next week, Keith. I'm very excited for playoffs. But for now, we are out of here. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow bright and early.